in his eternal glory with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God whose wisdom is beyond our understanding deal graciously with, their fa with the family and their grief surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Hi. This is a reading from Lamentations of Jeremiah. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for salvation of the Lord. 
for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read the song with me responsibly by whole verse. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while the people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving a multitude of heaving festival. Why are you cast down on me, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Massa. Deep calls to deep at the thunders of your cataracts, all your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to God in my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As is a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me continually, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Second reading is taken from Romans, a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with Him, so that we may be also glorified with Him. I considering that sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. <coughs> who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died? Yes, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, not things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I need you to stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. 
If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated, please. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And maybe I should say in Virgis sight too, because I don't want her to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Virgie C. Scheichstolt was a librarian. She loved being a school librarian. In Virgis day as a school librarian, it seemed to me that librarians pushed many carts of books between shelves, dilig diligently returning items to their assigned positions. They were wise in the ways of the Dewey Decimal System and Isbin numbers, and they could leaf through a cart catalog with agility and skill. These days, of course, they have to be equally skilled and agile with the computer. Librarians also need to have an enthusiasm for books and for reading. Verge had that in abundance. Several of Virgil's friends were in line to receive and pass on books to and from her, and her children grew up loving books and reading as well. Virgette said that she still can't read on a Kindle or an iPad. She has to have that book in her hands. And Virgette passed on her love for books and reading to her daughter Brittany, or B as her family calls her. And B passed the passion for books on to her daughter, Addie. Out of her love for reading, other people, students and adults, were likewise encouraged to find their joy in the words they encountered in their lives. Another quality necessary for librarians is organization. That was certainly true for Verge. Verge's organizational skills made her the number one fundraiser for the Crop Walk, which raised funds to feed those in need both in our country and in other countries. And believe me, Verge was competitive. <laughs> she did not care if she was competing against a six-year-old. She intended to fight. And if you didn't support her, by golly, you would be on her reject list. And that reject list could include the bishop as well. <laughs> her organizational skills also made her successful fundraising strawberry festival chairman, better known as the Straw Boss, a title reserved especially for Verge. Trinity Strawberry Festival began as a parish fun get-together, a way to enjoy each other's company. There would be games for the kids, which always operated at a financial loss, but where every child won some prize. A variety of strawberry pies where pie bakers would learn many different skills to produce the pies, dancing in the church parking lot, and other fun things. But as time went on, the church began to see the opportunity to make it into a fundraising machine. And into that perspective and goal stepped Verge, whose organizational skills increased our earnings every year. Of course, it was always a pleasure to work under Verge. <laughs> to say Verge was a micromanager would be an understatement. She watched over every area, restaurant, crafts, sloppy joe making, pie assembly, berry picking, berry hauling, berry washing, etc., etc., like an eagle eyeing a hawk for dinner. <laughs> I can remember one time dutifully washing berries in the deep sink in the furnace room and Verge coming in and telling me I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> she took the berries out of my hands and started to show me how she wanted them washed. Fortunately, I was alone in the furnace room so that when she left, I could say all kinds of things a priest should not say. <laughs> 
But at the end of the weekend, all of us exhausted and at the same time proud of what had been accomplished would gather together at the golf course or the rectory and celebrate with snacks and beer and camaraderie. The thing is that while we knew Verge could be crotchety during festival, we also knew that she worked as hard or harder than everyone else and that she was doing it to help out her beloved church. To Verge, working hard was a litmus test of a person's character. As one rector said, when Verge was assessing someone's character, her sentence of, of approval was always, he or she was a good worker. <laughs> if you didn't get that assessment, you were toast. <laughs> if you were lucky, she might give you a second chance by saying, I want to know the background. Whenever she felt insecure or unsure, she would, that would be her go-to statement of reserving judgment for the moment. <laughs> Father John Hagen commented that he told Verge that he was going to engrave her tombstone with a sentence, Herein lies a good worker. <laughs> of course, it would be true. Although Verge knew that God would love her even if she wasn't a good worker, I don't think she could have loved herself. She was even more demanding of herself than others. A week before her death, she was talking to me and she asked me hesitantly, I really do have more to do, but I think I have done a lot for the church, don't you? It was easy to go through the list of things she began and organized the Trinity as well as the numerous ways she contributed to helping others. For although she loved and gave tirelessly to so many causes at the church, she also gave generously to anyone in need, sometimes not so wisely, but always with love and compassion. Bridget came across Burgess' accounting of money she loaned people. Most loans were never fully repaid. She would have her feelings hurt sometimes when she tried to help someone and they misused her, but still she would go on and help the next person. She liked helping others and truly cared for them. She really did see Christ in them. She was equally generous to helping her family. She often took care of her granddaughter while Bridget had to go to work, getting Bee ready for school. Part of Bridget's job was to feed Bee breakfast before school. It was only later that Bridget discovered that the breakfast Burge fed her granddaughter was popcorn. <laughs> Burge was caring and generous, but she was not a goody two-shoes. She was not alien to having a good time. In her high school and college days, she could drink beer with the best of them, and she loved to dance and party. She liked motorcycles and tight pants, and fancied herself as a kind of Olivia Newton-John holding tightly to John Travolta as they sped down the highway. Burge would find any reason to party even to killing and plucking chickens, so everyone could partake in the eating. A good many of we weaker Trinitarians would be sure to arrive at the party after the killing and the plucking were finished. She loved being the center of attention, even though at first she would protest that was not true. However, why else dye the top of her hair various colors? Why else delight in people telling her she was getting too thin? Why else tell body jokes to the doctors and other medical staff when she was at the hospital on a variety of occasions? She loved seeing the surprise on the doctors' faces, especially the male doctors, when she told them she was ready for sex. <laughs> I, of course, would raise my eyebrows and swear to myself that this was absolutely the last time I was bringing her to emergency. <laughs> Burge was infamous for saying that she got married for sex and then didn't have enough when she was married. She teased Emmy Keene that she was going to see Emmy's husband Don before Emmy did. <laughs> and Emmy, knowing how Burge thought Don was a good looking guy, told Burge, now don't be going and making lewd marks to Don when you get to heaven because Don wouldn't go for that. <laughs> Burge also loved to be pampered, although she might deny that as well. She loved soaking in a warm tub, and as cheap as she was about spending money on herself, she didn't hesitate to get her hair done every Thursday. 
She also delighted in Gabby Burton coming to her house to clip her toenails and to work on the corns on her feet. She was glad to go on a pilgrimage to Scotland with Reverend Stacy Salas as long as Stacy made all the arrangements. <laughs> Another way in which Virg pampered herself was in her garden. She would not hesitate to buy more plants, no matter how many she already had. It was also another area where she was a very hard worker, but not necessarily of an organized garden. More than one rector thought the garden should be easy, or at least easier to care for, but Virg loved the wilder look of the English garden. And actually, the church garden looks quite organized, compared to her garden at home, which is alive with a variety of plants and flowers and colors and full of butterflies and bees and hummingbirds and, and plants stuck just anywhere, no organization, sometimes like in the middle of the lawn. <laughs> when Verge worked on her garden, it was a labor of love and joy. It was where she felt closest to God. As she was having more health issues and was convinced, usually unwillingly, to give up a particular ministry, she clung to directing the work of the Memorial Garden. It is no accident that we are outside today with view of the garden. She chose the new Memorial Garden chair, Gabby Burton, and trained Gabby to take care of the garden in the right way, the way Birch did it, of course. <laughs> And she chose where we'd all, we would all be located as she said goodbye, as we said goodbye to her today. Burge passed on her talent for gardening to her granddaughter, Bee, but Virgette messed out on that skill. <laughs> Virgette was notorious for underwatering and killing plants. So one time, Virge gave Virgette a jade plant, which requires very little watering. Virgette killed it by overwatering it. <laughs> and Virge was not pleased. You underwater every plant you've been given. How could you under overwater the jade plant, she asked with frustration. Virge's frusta frustration was nothing compared to how often many of us have been frustrated with her, though. She could be more stubborn than a mule. When she was obviously ill but couldn't get an appointment to see her doctor for three weeks, she ignored the pleas of many of us to see a different doctor, even in the same office. Recently, when her legs were swollen, bleeding, and painful, her neighbor Cookie begged Verge to let Cookie take her to the urgent care, begged her and begged her, but Verge refused, saying she'd wait till she saw her own doctor after Memorial Day. Cookie said she washed her hands of Verge then. But of course, Cookie didn't. We never did, because while she could be frustrating, we loved her dearly. We could spend days telling Verge stories, and I'm sorry I couldn't tell all of yours that you told me. We will miss her. Now she is in God's hands, and I hope he packed his patience. <laughs> I'm sure when she sees a garden in heaven, she's going to be trying to take it over. And all these rooms that the gospel tells us that God has for us, his beloved children, Virg will be trying to organize how they should be managed and distributed. <laughs> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. I asked Virg if she felt confident that she was right with God. Did she know that she was loved by God? Oh, yes, she said. I know that I am loved. I know that God is waiting for me. We are gathered here today in front of the Memorial Garden to participate in the final rite of passage for Verge. And we are here because of her influence in our lives. For you, Bob, Virgette, B, Addie, Chuck, family, and yes, Vaughn too, who isn't with us today. Your lives were intertwined with hers from the moment you were born. In fact, before you were born. Others of you who are here in intersected with Verge in different contexts during the course of your lives. No matter what your connection, who you are will never be the same because of the woman she was. You are part of the legacy she leaves behind. 
more than 2,000 years ago, another person passed away and his death was marked by his friends and family. They feared that the finality of death would consume him and his memory, but death was no match for him. For in him, death's permanent hold on the world was broken, and he gave his followers a legacy that would carry them through the perilous days and years ahead. He gave them and us a promise and a hope that in the end, light would defeat darkness and life would defeat death. We are here today heirs of that promise and that hope. We stand like the original disciples, heartbroken at the loss we have suffered, sharing our grief over the love, the loss of a beloved mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, friend, and neighbor. But we can live our lives trusting in the original promise given by Jesus Christ that in him death is defeated and that he waits with loving arms opened to us. Perhaps it was Addie who best expressed what we are feeling today and what we can take with us as we go on with our lives. Addie called her great-grandmother Verge Gigi. It was the day before Verge's death. Bridget sat next to her mother's hospital bed in the hospital lounge chair. Brittany sat on the end of the bed at her grandmother's feet. Three-year-old Addie, who had been wandering around the room, walked up to Verge, her grandmother, put her hand in the still hand of her great-grandmother and said simply, I love my Gigi. Love. Love is what carries us forward. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is a poem by Mary Oliver called Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles to the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the valleys and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. I wanted to do this poem because I love it, but also because it reminds me so, so much My grandma, she taught, she taught me to notice the geese, you know, like she, I was going through her photos because I made the memory board and she just would have photos of like leaves on the ground <laughs> because they look like hearts. And to me, that is the best gift that she could have given me. She gave me so much, but the, the gift of presence and being able to notice just how beautiful this world is. And I just wanted to share that with you. Let us affirm our faith, standing and praying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our sister Virg, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ.
Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for virg, and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Virg. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life of our home. Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions. We pray not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place, eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, after the, therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. This is the table of our Lord. It is made ready for those who love Him and for those who want to love Him more. So come, 
you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here very long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Because it is our Lord who invites us. It is His desire that those who want Him can meet Him here. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank you. 